Akushara Baha country Baluzi and Akabanga Yada Sibra de Kashanta Rema Zubra de Kende Keba Shaka Barantra Baluski Dangayada Rema Zuba Barike Terebo Sukayada Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for guiding us, helping us, directing us. Thank you, God Father. Since Tuesday, God, you've been releasing your wisdom. Thank you, God, because God, we're here to do. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you, God. Even right now, God, you will speak to us. You will help us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Now, because of the kind of economic situation we have found ourselves, sometimes so-called employers of labor have the tendency of exploiting people. Some people are exploiters. Amen. So, because they know you have no other job to go to, they are going to pay you 8000 after graduating four years of university. It's exploitation. And sometimes it's not because the business is not doing well. They just want to exploit. And then secondly, Sometimes somebody may have started business. The person is outside the will of God. The business is not doing well. You're going to join them there. You are inside somebody's disobedience. <laughs> may you not be caught inside another person's disobedience. Yeah. yeah, so you need to just be very alert. And many times don't allow um, an oversensitive conscience from keeping you from doing what is even reasonable praise god the lord will keep guiding us amen. amen one of the things the lord said i should tell you tonight is that the sad thing is that people learn too late in life there are many things people ought to have known very early in life they learn it too late there are many people who are already married i wish they knew a lot before they got married People learn too late. And you know that wherever you are in life, whatever you can achieve is a function of what you know. Am I right? It's a function of what you know. Exposure to knowledge, exposure to knowledge creates a different platform for any human being. That is why, please, I want to beg you that you must keep exposing yourself to godly wisdom godly wisdom and as far as i'm concerned since the bible says wisdom is the principal thing one of the things you must press for in every facet of your life go for knowledge go for wisdom praise god second thing i believe that the lord wants me to tell you is that today's complacency today's complacency is tomorrow's captivity Today's complacency is tomorrow's captivity. Write it down. Many people are too complacent about life. They are too complacent about life. And anything you are complacent about, that you are careless about, you are like a desical about, becomes tomorrow's captivity. I'll give you an example. And that's something that truly bothers me. Do you know that if a man, a man, from age 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 20, is complacent, and then he becomes a young adult. He gets married, he's complacent about his walk with God. He's complacent about spirituality. He's complacent about even learning what it means to be a husband, to be the head of a home. What happens is that that complacency will lead to captivity tomorrow. Because as the man, you are supposed to be the head of the home. But if you didn't learn headship, if you didn't learn headship, how do you do it in real life? That's the bane of the, of, of the, of the issue. So today's complacency is tomorrow's captivity. Daddy used to say it one way in the local parlance. He said, what till you look through where I? Now your mate said they better pass you. That's complacency. There are many people who were faced with great opportunities, 
But because when opportunities come, they don't look like opportunities. They look like work. They look like wahala. So you just were careless. That complacency has led to people missing out on great investments. May God help you. And remove every kind of complacency from your life. Don't be complacent about life. Life is serious business, I'm telling you. And the thing about life is that you only have one chance to live it. You only have one chance to go through this life. There's no repeats. There's no, this is not a rehearsal. This is the real deal. And it's important that you engage properly in this game called life. Shakespeare made that statement I shared with you. All the world is a stage. And the men and women are only actors. We all make our entrances. Eventually, we make our exits. But it is you who determines how you show up on that stage. If your marriage is going to be succeeding, it depends on you. If your marriage will fail, it's in your hand. All the wisdom required to have a blessed marriage, a blissful marriage, have been put within our disposal. But it depends on you whether you will take it and use it or you are going to be complacent. You are going to be complacent, not be married. Wait till they there. Just see girl when you like, you're married, just go house, never finish. Wait till woman wants to give mother food. <laughs> uh, I hear foolishness speaking. <laughs> so this complacency will lead to captivity. That is why I see, I, I don't joke about life, to be honest. No play. It's not a joke. I didn't come here to look around. I came here to do this life. Amen. I came here to do this life. So I'm not here to toy it around. And do you know that your time is a unit of destiny? Your time is your life. That is why when somebody lives 80 years, 100 years, when the person died, they say his lifetime was 80 years. Because time is life. And you don't have time to fool around. And so when God begins to give us wisdom, it's important that you engage with that wisdom and begin to use it. If you understand me, say amen. amen. When it comes to the issue of marriage, just as every other issues in our life, Satan desires that we bow, bow before at the altar of his philosophies. When it comes to marriage, any other issue, he came to Jesus and said, if you will bow down, I'll give you everything. He makes all these big promises that he cannot deliver. Okay, so when it comes to marriage, eh, the devil also wants you to bow at the altar of his philosophy. It is you that will make up your mind. Say, no. No, 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 no. I'm not going there. I'm going to follow the word of God. And I can guarantee you that as you follow God's word, you will always arrive on the peaceful shore. Say, Amen. You will always arrive on the other side blessed. Praise God. And please tonight, even as I go through God's word, I pray that wisdom will come to you in the name of Jesus. I want to talk to you tonight about God's general purpose for marriage. God's general purpose for marriage. Because you see, when the purpose of a thing is not known, Abuse is inevitable. There are many people who got married without knowing why, why did God create marriage? Why did God? Even this marriage, marriage, marriage. We say marriage is God's product. And every product has a purpose. Am I right? Every product. God is a God of purpose. God doesn't do anything without a purpose. He created your nose to smell. He created your eyes to see, your ears to hear, your skin to feel. God doesn't do anything without a purpose. If you see something that was created by God and you don't know the purpose, you say, this did not get purpose. Like uh, doctors will tell us, where is doctor? They will tell us that, uh, uh, what's that thing that the appendix has no purpose? They have not discovered the purpose. God doesn't do anything without a purpose. God doesn't do anything without a purpose. So when God decided that he was going to create marriage, before marriage came about, God already decided what the purpose of marriage is. And in searching the Bible, I see at least a minimum of five purposes I'd like to run through tonight. A minimum of five purposes that God has, you know. <laughs> Praise God. 
So because God does everything with a purpose, eh, please, if you are a believer, every single believer, okay, we even, the Bible says we are called according to his purpose. We are called according to his purpose. Let me just tell you, when you become a believer, the first thing you should be asking, why was I saved? Don't just, just, don't, don't just, just have to go to church. Why was, there's a purpose why you were saved. So when I see somebody, he has, he has said he has been saved for five years. He has been saved for one year. Then they say, let us pray. He's looking around. Huh. This one never see the purpose yet. You have not seen the purpose yet. God doesn't do anything with that. He saved you for a purpose. Everything he does is with a purpose. So when two people get married, eh, there is also a specific, before I talk about general purpose, let me just quickly talk about specific purpose. Every marriage has a purpose. I'm married to this beautiful, handsome, elegant young man. He will always be a young man. But do you know that there is a purpose? It's not so that uh, we will just be staying together. Apart from the general purpose which we want to deal with, there is also a specific purpose. Just like God has general purpose for all Christians, but specific purpose for the individual Christian. General purpose for all Christians, live in holiness, be a soul winner, pray. Those are general purpose. But God has specifics for each person. The same thing, there is general purpose for all marriages on earth. But there is specific purpose for each marriage. So when a, a couple, they are getting ready to get married, eh, it is from then they will, that's why if you, if you listen to my message on Christian courtship, it is from that courtship you people have already started asking God, what is the purpose of this marriage? And that's why I tell people, as soon as you get engaged, I pray I'll be able to talk about even before they get engaged tomorrow. Before you get engaged, as you get engaged, eh, during that courtship, you people must put aside at least one day a week for fasting and prayer. Even if people are not staying in the same town, if it's Tuesday we are fasting and praying, we pray online. Do you know that because everything has a purpose? Because even many Christians don't know the purpose of courtship. That courtship itself has purpose. Eh? They get into courtship and the next thing, you are going to cook, you are going to clean house. That's not the purpose of courtship. Amen? It's not the purpose of courtship. Courtship has something more serious. Because you are preparing for something that is going to affect the rest of your life. You don't approach it lackadaisically. Amen. So you are spending one day a week. You are fasting, you are praying. And you are meeting in an open place. Don't be saying after the fast, when I pray, finish. Say, hey, ah, no one's body, they do me. <laughs> Sit inside church and pray. I'm telling you. Because you have to guard your destiny. No, if that destiny is important to you, you have to guard it. Because the devil will do whatever he can to make sure that he derails that destiny. Amen. I'm talking to people tonight who I believe that in your heart, there's something that tells you that you are not here by happenstance. That you came here to do something uncommon with your life. Am I talking to the right people? So the... After you are married, in case you missed it before you got married, husband and wife, after this seminar, you sit together and you ask God, what is the purpose of this our marriage? Specifically, for some couple, God may just call them, I've called you to be kingdom financiers. So every business they are going to do, oh, there's a way a Christian lives. Every Christian business you are going to do is not about getting money. You become a multi-millionaire. All that thing is so that you can fulfill the purpose of the marriage, which is to be a kingdom financier. God can call a couple that say, I want you people, you see all these small, small girls moving around, I want you people to engage them. Engage them for me. 
And that is what the two of them are focused on. Praise God. So let me go. So go and pray. Those people that are already married. General purpose. God's general purpose for marriage. Number one, for the accomplishment of God's divine purpose for the earth. For the accomplishment of God's divine purpose for the earth. Now, please, um, media, you will work really fast with me tonight. Okay? Now, so God created the man, Adam, first. And then the wife later. In Genesis 2, verse 15, the Bible says, It is not good for the man to be alone. Alone doing what? Alone in the assignment that God had given him. In verse 15, God said, Take care of the earth, keep it, tend it. God gave the man an assignment. And God saw that the man couldn't do the assignment by himself. He needed somebody to join him to do the assignment. And he said, okay, let me now give him somebody to help him. So marriage is for the creation of a team, a formidable team of a man and his wife together to face the divine assignment for their lives. It's for teamwork. That is why, please let me tell you, that is why you don't just enter church and just marry anybody you see. I posted something the other time. Church is like hospital. Some people are not responding to treatment. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? He may not be responding to treatment yet. Eh? If you go and pitch your camp with somebody that's not responding to treatment, you cannot even now face the assignment. You are here for assignment. You are here for assignment. Do you know that the most purpose, purposeful people on earth are people who have a sense of destiny? It's about an assignment. I'm here on an assignment. Do you know you are here on an assignment? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. So please, in, in that Genesis 2.15, God said, I will give him a helper suitable for him. Suitable to help him. Suitable to assist him. Two of them together can do something. The Bible says one shall chase a thousand. Two will chase how many? Ten thousand. Together there is a stronger team to do something uncommon with their lives. Praise God. Media, give me Ephesians 2 verse 10. If not that Adam had a work to do, there would be no need for the wife. If not that there was work to do, there would have been no need for the wife. Can I have a chair there quickly, Pastor? Give me one chair. Where's um, any husband and wife? Quickly. Mom must come. Of will come quick. Oh, you they go call her too far. Please, any husband and wife now, volunteer. Your husband is already coming. Oh, yeah, come. Oh, they are wasting my time. Praise God. Now see, God created the man, Adam, and God gave him a job. The job is to carry this chair. That's his assignment on earth, to carry this chair from here to there. If Adam was going to stay, I'm using Adam now, okay? If he was going to stay on earth for 90 years, that 90 years, God already has streamlined it. From age 20 to 30, this chair will move from here to here. From 30 to 40, this chair will move from here to here. That is why to waste chunks of time, you are wasting part of your destiny. Now, so this guy starts to carry this chair and he's not able to carry it. And God says, you know, son, don't worry. I know what to do. I'm going to give you somebody to make it easy for you. And he brings his wife. The wife then was brought deliberately and intentionally, first of all, for the assignment. Amen. First of all, for the assignment. Not for, for the assignment first. 
Not for first for enjoyment. Not first for enjoyment. First for the assignment. And then the woman comes and then she doesn't have a sense of destiny. So she comes and instead of helping, she sits on the assignment. <laughs> How does she sit on the assignment? Me? No. Eh. Hmm. 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 <sighs> Excuse me, sister. As you are saying, eh? Ticking, 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 ticking. Time is going. All oh, this one, we have something to talk about. There's something to talk about. Every day, there's something to talk about. Time is going. You are sitting on that assignment. But then this girl comes to church, to this marriage seminar. She hears God's word. I say, oh, I, I'm not sitting anymore. We're going to work. We're going to work. Are they moving? Do you know, and that's what daddy has been emphasizing, that you must create room for your wife. Say, I, I, I don't get sense before, before I marry you. Your wife cannot even put in a word. She cannot throw in any advice. You are not going to get sense. You are not making room. Do you know that everything in this woman, her beauty, her intelligence, everything was packaged for this man. It's a full package. Everything. Because the Bible says that the man was not created for the woman. The woman was created. Packaged for you. See, you were packaged. Created for him. Are you seeing it now? So first of all, you were created for this assignment. Sit down first. You stand and be thinking about how you will carry her from the assignment. <laughs> All right. So number one is for assignment. Then number two, for partnership and friendship. Friendship and companionship. For partnership. Partnership means friendship and companionship. In Psalm 68... Psalm 68 verse 6. The Bible says God sets the solitary in families. God doesn't want anybody to just be, you know, he said, no, 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 no. I will put you into, I will set you into a family. And do you know that in bringing you here, eh, if you are sitting like this, have you seen husband and wife, they are driving in the same car. They look like wooden Indians. This one face this side. This one, the man, if not that he's driving instead for face sky. I'm like, this is a marriage. No friendship. You know, I took the liberty to check the dictionary for the meaning of companion. He said a companion is a person or an animal. May you not follow animal. <laughs> a person or animal with whom one spends a lot of time and with whom one travels. You are traveling this journey of life together. Do you know that what God desires is that as people are doing the marriage, you are creating memories together. Those memories are going to be there till old age. If you didn't create good memories when you are young, there won't be memories in old age. Friendship. Marriage is about friendship. It's about friendship. It's about friendship. It's about companionship. So if right now you are married and somehow your husband is not or your wife is not, see, you that knows better, you are the one who will create the environment where there will be some friendship. Yesterday I told you that partnership Partner is, has two sides, part and owner. So God created this marriage where the two people are part owners of each other. So you own me, I own you. Amen. You own me, I own you. We own each other. So that means that we are free to enter each other's space. 
Amen. Amen. And that is why there's a big problem. If you are going to have a cell phone that I cannot access. No, if you are going to have a cell phone that I cannot access, I said there's a big problem. Because I want to know what's in that phone. Why can't I access your phone? If you are a Christian, let me tell you, you are a Christian. And your husband, do you know, I didn't know some people there, eh? what's up, get lock. The other one, there's lock. I didn't know it was possible. Me, I just put one password because of my grand, I don't want my grandbaby to access my phone like that. But all this lock you put, what I want to ask is why? If we are partners, part owner, it means you own me, I own you. There is nothing in your life that I should not have access to. And there is nothing in my life that you cannot have access to. And there must be friendship. A marriage where people play together is a marriage that will last. A family that plays together stays together. If you create that kind of home where, mm hmm, mm hmm, you don't know how many years I tell senior you because I marry you. That's not a marriage, yo. I'm telling you, that's not a marriage, yo. Eh? Just look for your mate when you go marry. Don't. Uh, yeah, uh, one, one man was beating his wife. I called him that time, the other child. I called him. I said, What do you think you are doing? He said, No, no, no. Are they looking like my junior sister? The way they do. I said, What? Your wife is not your junior sister. She's your partner, she's your wife. She, there is no, you for Coco stay with your junior sister. You for not marry. This woman is not your junior sister. Please, who is she? Is she your wife? You marry her, complete. She's for you. Carry go. I mean, friendship. You see, that is why sometimes when people get married and they are going to keep quarreling, I said, they didn't understand the purpose. We are talking about God's purpose for marriage. God's purpose for marriage that he doesn't want you to be solitary. He wants you to have somebody to have fun with, somebody to discuss with, somebody to laugh with. So he gives you a life partner. Then one sister will now pray, oh, God, give me husband. God, give me husband. God, give her husband. He said, I'll be the quiet type. <laughs> Sit down for corner. Sit down for corner. Say, I know Sabi talk. Please, if you are that type, eh, you don't understand the purpose of marriage. Don't marry. Don't go and make somebody's life difficult. Because according to God's plan, eh, because of time I'm rushing, I can't read many, many scriptures. The thing about it is that God created marriage for friendship. You can wake up in the morning and have somebody to talk to. Something is on my mind. I have somebody to discuss with unashamed. Amen. Amen. So your marriage partner is a partner in life and partner for life. It's my partner in life is my partner for life. So is my confidant, is my gisting partner, is my that's, that's just what it is. Praise God. I'd like us to look at 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Media, give me 1 Peter 3, 7 quickly. No, give me Malachi 2, 14 first. Give me Malachi 2, 14 quickly. Malachi 14, 14. Put it, okay, you, you say, wherefore? Because the Lord has been witness between you and the wife of your youth. See the way God calls it to The wife of your youth. The wife of your youth. Against whom thou hast dared treacherous. He was talking about men who were committing adultery against their wives, okay? God said, I will not answer your prayer. That's, but we didn't have time to read. That's, I'm not dealing with adultery. So, he said, yet is she thy companion. That's the plan of God. That woman should be your companion. Your companion. The one you are going together with, you are spending time with. It also makes sense that somebody gets married. 
Eh? You leave your wife for house. You say you are hanging out with the boys in the evening. Are you married to the boys? You leave your wife at home. You, you go somewhere else. Or a girl, a woman, we leave her husband at home. You go sit down, they put story with neighbors. You are not a Christian. Is anybody listening to me? So, for friendship, for companionship. For friendship, for companionship. That's the second reason why God created marriage. He says she's your companion. Can you just help me with um, NLT quickly? This scripture. I wish I had like five hours to teach this five points. NLT. You cry out, why doesn't the Lord accept my worship? I'll tell you why. God will never accept your worship eh? because of this. Because the Lord witnessed the vows you and your wife made when you were young. But you have been unfaithful to her. Though she remained your faithful partner, the wife of your marriage vows. God said, no, I'll not answer you. That worship, I will not even take it. Why? Because my plan for your marriage was that she should be your companion. If you bring another companion, God said, no, I don't recognize this one you are bringing. This one you are bringing, I don't recognize her. The one I recognize is the one that I was there at the wedding. Praise God. Number three. Number three purpose why God created marriage. And, and do you know that when it comes to this, eh, as the husband and wife are living in partnership like that, anything they ask together in agreement, God will do it. You remember what Jesus was teaching in Matthew 18 verse 19. He said, if two of you on earth shall agree Touching anything they shall ask. The best two people to be prayer partners, husband and wife. The best two people to be prayer partners, husband and wife. Amen. If they shall agree on anything. Many times um, when I'm going to preach outside of church here, especially when it's a really big meeting, like when I was going to Port Harcourt, before I leave, I kneel down. I said, Daddy, Pray for me. If two of us shall agree on us. If two of us shall agree on us. There is hardly anything over the past 32, 33 years we've been married that two of us just agree and say, God, do this thing for us. Hardly anything. Starting from even the place at which we got married when we had nothing. I mean, physically speaking. We had nothing. But along the road, we kept holding hands, believing God. Who knew that our children would even be able to go to any kind of decent school? But holding hands, believing God. Holding hands, believing God. Friendship and companionship. Praise God. Please go home and laugh together. It's part of God's plan. If you are not laughing at home, you are, you are, you are, you are breaking God's Part of God's plan for that marriage. There should be laughter. A husband comes from work. Let him meet a smile on the wife's face. No matter what ails you, let there be a smile on your face. Ah, welcome. How was your day? Not that the man is coming, your face is frowning. Don't they come again? Not, nothing will help somebody do for this house. Smart and I go say, won't eat. After I eat, finish, you go say, Me, we'll go the other side. Make it come, make it come. Now they wait for her. Uh, you don't know that. See, this thing I'm telling you is not about your husband, it's about God's plan. Number three, number three, we are looking at God's plan. Marriage was ordained by God to produce godly offspring. Marriage was ordained by God to produce godly offspring. Malachi 2.15. The Bible says God's expectation for the home is to produce godly offspring. So God expects your marriage to be productive. He told them, Genesis 1.28, be fruitful and multiply. Do you know that as a, 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 a married couple, eh, it is not just a case of say we are having children. And that is why I say many times that people learn too late. People learn too late. 
You, you, you want to have children. You are praying to have children. You have not even learned anything about how to raise children. Not to talk of how to raise godly children in a very chaotic world. God is looking for godly children. There's no need to burn a child if that child is going to be contributed to the kingdom of darkness. Amen. It's better not to have a child than to have a child that will be contributed to the kingdom of darkness. Now, so if the plan of God is that every couple raise godly seed, it means that any married couple under God, no matter what the doctor says here and there, you are, you are expected to believe God to have your own children. Amen. He said, none shall be barren in this land. Praise God. None shall be barren. So, the, the, the expectation is that as you get married, you have children. If there's any form of delay, it is your kingdom right to insist and have your own children. Praise God. And as the children come, you raise them from God. You raise them, sorry, you raise them for God. So you are not yet, my piki, my piki, you are spoiling the child. My piki, my piki, you are spoiling the child. That's not the plan. The plan is that these children must be raised up. Raised up for God. Amen. Amen. That's why sometimes when announcements are made, I say, what do these parents think they are doing? Eh? Buy notebook for your child to come to children's church. You know, go buy notebook. Look for small Bible. You will not buy. But you dress them expensive clothes. You think the clothes are more important than their spiritual life? Raise godly seed. is the plan of God. Amen. Amen. So your marriage, eh, God has an expectation. As looking at your marriage, is checking all these things. Are they doing these things I said? Then number four, number four, I know that you will like this one. To bring about complete sexual satisfaction between a man and his wife. To bring about complete sexual satisfaction between a man and his wife. It was God that created marriage. It was God that created sex. And I say it all the time, sex is not a sin. Amen. Hey, they didn't say amen. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> sex is not a sin. It's just that God defined the perimeters where sex must be used. And it is sex outside those perimeters that is seen. Amen. No, I need to say that because there are many young girls who were raised in churches where, mm, mm, mm. so in their mind, even after they get married, they still look at it as if this thing is a sin. It is not a sin. After you marry, it is not a sin. Amen. It is outside of marriage. God said, don't go there. Don't even dare it. But after you marry, God was the one who did it. God was the one who put it. God was the one who designed it. And he designed it because he loved the man and the woman he had created. And he wanted them, if he just said, go and burn children. Imagine that you burn children through sex and the sex is not enjoyable. You know, it's, it's, it's terrible. It's hard work. Do you understand what I'm... Oh, they are looking at me now. <laughs> All right. Let me give you scripture so you don't think that this pastor has become carnal. Proverbs 5.15. Please, media, give me Proverbs 5.15. Put it up in NF, NIV. NIV. Please, you will read with me because I'm going all the way... Um, from 15 all the way to 20. Drink water from your own cistern. Running water from your own well. Should your springs overflow in the streets, your streams of water in public squares, <laughs> he said, let them be yours alone, never to be shared with strangers. All those your water, all those your water, they come up for your body. He said, it's for you alone. Don't share it with strangers. Now, he said now the person who is not a stranger now. May your fountain be blessed. May you rejoice in the wife of your youth. Go on. Go on now. Verse, 
a loving doe, a graceful deer, may her breast satisfy you how many times? So I always tell people, the breast not be just to feed Piki. Am I the one that said it now? How can a young girl Thank you for that answer. How can, how can a young girl get married? Your husband won't tell you, hey, no, 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 no. Where is it past, past be seen? I tell all of you young girls, eh? The report that I come and get sometimes after a wedding. And I ask, what do they say that they do for marriage? He said, you know what made the breast for? Let me tell you, whether they touch the breast, they not touch the breast, so it goes still fall. It will move towards the northern pole. <laughs> Praise God. He said, let her, her breast satisfy you always. May you ever be captivated by her love. Now, this is the purpose of God. He said, if you go and let another person, he said, why be captivated, my son, by an adulteress? Why? Why embrace the bosom of another man's wife? Do you know that that uh, another girl, if you go and touch another girl, even though she is not yet married, God sees her as another man's wife because you already have your own. That one, is, it belongs to another. She may still be single. So why are you playing with another man's wife? The girl is not married though, but God already see, as you are here, you are single. God already said that this one, I have husband for this one. So if you are going to go and mess up with a man, God said, why are you allowing somebody to touch the body that only your husband was supposed to touch? Amen. Amen. So why? So the God is saying that when we get married, part of his plan is that as a husband and wife, we should share this level of intimacy that we cannot share with any other person. Eh? Eh? Come. This is my son. I can hold his hand. There's nothing wrong. I can hug him. There's nothing wrong. Isn't it? But there is one thing reserved for only that man. And God did it in such a way that it is not something that you should trivialize. That means that as a wife, you are a wife, you must see it as your God-given duty, as part of your responsibility in a marriage relationship to make sure that that bedroom is working. I'm telling you. <laughs> Well, there are single people here and children, so I will not go more than that. But let me tell you that whether you like it or not, it is God's plan. And if God has planned something that this is what I want, and you get there and say, no, I don't want, what are you? You are in disobedience. You are in disobedience. And if God said, I created marriage so that this man, when he don't walk, he don't come, he don't tire, there should be somewhere to put his head. Let her breast satisfy you. Put your head there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter the size, whether it's big, whether it's small, whether, whatever the size, take her like that. Praise God. I'll show you one more scripture. Give me 1 Corinthians 7 verse 1. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 1. Verse 1. Now, please, I want you to put this up for me in message translation and I'm going to read from 1 to 7 please everybody look up this is very interesting now getting down to the questions you asked in your letter to me Apostle Paul was replying a letter that the Corinthians wrote first is it a good thing to have sexual relations that was the question the Corinthian church was asking I mean they were asking their disciple this was the person who brought Christ to them and they wanted to know because these were people who were endeavoring to follow Christ. Is it, is it okay for us to have sexual relations? And then look at verse 2. Apostle Paul said what? Certainly, it's okay. But, are you saying the but there? But only within a certain context. 
It's good for a man to have a wife and for a woman to have a husband. Sexual drives are strong, but marriage is strong enough to contain them and to provide for a balanced and fulfilling sexual life in a world of sexual disorder. Sexual drives are strong. He said, but the way God has created marriage, marriage is strong enough to contain it. Now, so if you understand the, the mind of God, and this man has sexual drive, and he's married, and he comes home, and the madam says no today, no tomorrow. Is she obeying the word of God? Now, I want us to know what we are doing. I want us to know what we are doing. He said it's okay. Sexual relations, it's okay to have sexual relations, but only within the context of marriage. That is, any Christian young man or woman who is planning to fulfill purpose, he said don't go there. He said, don't go there. Okay, let's go. No, go to verse 3. Back. The marriage bed must be a place of mutuality. The husband in that bed is seeking to satisfy his wife. And the wife is seeking to satisfy her husband. So that's what's going to be going on on that bed. Marriage is not a place to stand up for your right. Stand up. Get up. <laughs> Stand up for your right. He said, that's not a marriage. Eh? You know that even in many people's marriage is my, my own, my own. So, so how to please yourself? He said, no. That the way God has done it is that for a believer, the marriage bed is a place of mutuality. Each person trying to please the other. Praise God. Marriage is not a place to stand up for your rights. Marriage is a decision to serve the other, whether in bed or out of bed. So when you get married, you have decided to serve each other, whether in bed, out of bed. It's a decision to serve each other. Please, are you listening to the word of God? Marriage is a decision to serve each other. It's not a decision to be served by this glorified house girl that you got. Is a decision to serve each other. Marriage is a decision to serve each other. That is the plan of God. It's a decision to serve each other. I will serve you. You will serve me. I will serve you. You will serve me. I will serve you. You will serve me. It's so painful to see that a so-called Christian man, even when the wife is sick, no, if he carry body, do anything. The woman will still carry the sick body because the Osu and Onini and the Okobaru. Excuse me. Marriage is a decision to serve. Okay? Abstaining from sex is permissible for a period of time if you both agree to it. And if it's for the purposes of prayer and fasting. He said that is the only time. Husband and wife. This is God. Is, am I reading novel? No. Oh, should I talk like this? Or I should go home. Because you single people need to know this before you get married, so that you don't think that when God is saying don't commit fornication, God wants to punish you. God is reserving something beautiful for you. Are you listening to me? The one you do outside of marriage, and you do it with uh, conscience. Anytime you conscious, when they just talk, God outside, you go, hey, okay, no. Jesus. <laughs> hey, Jesus. You go home and cry and repent. Why? God is reserving something beautiful for you. Amen. You know, when I was listening to uh, this, my Moro the other time, he said, my wife and I were both virgins when we got married. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Unfortunately, many churches don't talk about these things anymore. So I said, this generation, leave them, they don't, they don't go. No. There are still people who love Jesus. There are still people who want to live right. Praise God. All right, so for those of you that are married, free passage, that's what the Bible is saying. God created it like that. It's part of his purpose for marriage. And don't spoil God's purpose. Don't spoil God's purpose. How can you be a young 
couple. A whole week passed, nothing to happen. Somebody say error. Two weeks passed, nothing to share. Somebody say na lie. A whole one month. Ah, prayer point. No now. No, please. Don't spoil God's beauty. I don't know how people are thinking it. Whether if husband and wife they are getting there, go, go close eye for heaven. We'll say, no, nah, ah, they don't start again. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You think that's what God does? The only way we close eyes is when single people are doing such stuff. God said, Kai, why, is, why are they trying to dis- destroy their destiny? But for married people, God said, fire down, fire down, fire down, fire down, fire down. Praise God. So that's number what now? Number four. To bring about complete sexual satisfaction between a man and his wife. Number five, purpose of marriage, to prevent immorality. To prevent immorality. So I have said it before, sex outside of marriage is a sin. And let me quickly say this. Marriage will not deliver you from sexual immorality. When you get born again, one of the things that must happen, the Bible says you must know how to to hold yourself eh, in sanctification and honor. It is not a case of, hey, because Apostle Paul said, it is better to marry than to burn, right? Okay, so you marry because the body they hurt, okay? But that is not the best reason to get married. Make her, hey, because my body, they hurt. That's not the best reason. But he said, when he, he don't, cuckoo marry. Okay? But do you know that if you don't deal with your sexuality, eh, and you just marry out of, oh, my body, they hurt, by the time you get married, I can guarantee you, you will commit adultery. Because if you don't know how to control yourself now as a single guy, eh, what of, at the time, maybe, sorry, darling, at a time where you, you go on cross-posting and you're going to be there for six months. That's why I tell people, and I, and I say this all the time, please listen to me. There's a new trick that the devil has brought on the block and you must know that this is a trick from the devil. All this, when you say, husband, go to Nigeria. You go first carry wife, may go Canada with the children. Set up to scatter. Take it from me set up to destroy and a generation is going to come eh? a generation will arise where and already there's a generation that are already suffering what i want to say that the the children all are in the u.s uk abroad they are in the abroad eh? so the 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 baby the uh, daughter gives birth who goes for mugwa the mother goes for mugwa and my marriage UK. Ha. Six months, Mama still do a mugwa. So now we are having a generation of lonely old men. Sitting in Nigeria. Mama went for a mugwa for one year. Now, so please, when you are making decisions, make informed decisions. Don't just do things because that's what appears to be raining. That's what people. One, one, one uh, lady called me. Because she, she grew up from here. She said, my husband said, I should go with the children to the U.S. Then he'll be sending money. I said, if you try him. If you try him. If he's tired of the marriages, you say so. From here to U.S., straight flights is about 12, 13 hours. As, as I speak to you, I don't know if it has come down, but there was a time at the peak of... Uh, uh, when people were trying to get ticket, ticket or common UK year was 2.5 million. How many times can he make that trip? So when body they shake and body they shake, I will say, Father in heaven, I glorify your name. Oh. If he does it today, he will do it next month. He will do it the other month. You people are playing with fire. You are playing with fire. Am I talking to anybody tonight? That is why what God has ordained is that the husband and the wife should do everything possible to be together. Do everything possible. Do you know that even getting a job 
that the man is going to be away for so long unless it is for a time. Do everything. Do everything to be together. It says so that the devil doesn't tempt you for your incontinency. Glory to God. So tonight, these are, as far as I can, I know, five distinct purposes why God created marriage. Number one, for the pursuit of purpose. Assignment on the earth. Assignment on the earth. Do you know that a man without a purpose is a man without direction? A man without a sense of purpose is a man that has no restraint. So when you marry that woman, you people are planning together. Hey, hey honey, how will we come to this one? How will they arrive here? How will they arrive here? How can we do this? You people are planning it together because you are together as a team. You are together as a team. So when I hear a man, one, one man told me the other time, me, I know they plan with my wife, or the, the woman, and I read Mumu. Then if you want to do something, come and tell me. I say, don't try it. Am I your wife? How can you go and marry somebody? Are you not the one that married her? How can you do that? The Bible says, whatever Adam called his wife, uh, uh, they, uh, they called every living thing. That was the name thereof. So if you call your wife a mumu, do you know that she can never be anything to you more than a mumu? Because whatever you call her, that's what she becomes. If you call her a help indeed, that's what she becomes. That's what she becomes. She, she rises up to whatever you call her. Or she falls to the degree to which you call her. So this woman, she's, 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 she's just the best. She rises up to that. In life, people rise up to your expectation. People rise up to the level of your expectation. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. All right. So this is um, day three of the marriage summit. Now let me say this to you. All single people, listen and listen well. Do you know that, and I'll, I'll speak into that tomorrow. You are, you are a married man. You are not a married man. Do you know that the Bible says that you are the head of your marriage? Every man, listen to me here before we close tonight. Every single brother, listen. Listen. God believes in the headship of the man. What did I say? God believes in the headship of the man. And that is why if there is anybody that should be very serious about their spiritual life, first and foremost must be the man. Because you can't give what you don't have. Who is going to be guarding the front gate of your house when the devil wants to sneak in? Who is going to be there? You can't be a man, a Christian man, and you are not going to take spiritual things seriously. If you are a man here and you don't give yourself to fasting, let's say like once a week, and you are a Christian man, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. You are a Christian man, you don't take time to pray. There's something wrong. I'm telling you. The headship of the man means, let me, let me give you an example before I close. Do you know that that day, when Adam and his wife ate that fruit, when God came, who did he ask? Who took the fruit? Was it not his wife? Why did he not ask Adam? Why did he not ask his wife? Because he didn't put the wife in charge. He didn't put the wife in charge. The man was in charge. He didn't bother with the woman. He went, Adam, where are you? You get to Exodus. God calls Moses says, go and deliver my people. Moses was going to deliver the people. Exodus chapter 4, the Bible says, God met Moses on the way and God wanted to kill him. Ah, excuse me, you sent this man a couple of chapters ago. You want to kill him in chapter 4. What did he do? The Bible says that quickly the wife took sharp stones and circumcised the sons. Because the wife knew why God wanted to kill her husband. Why? Because Moses was a covenant man and God has said all the males must be circumcised. But Moses married a wife that was not a Jew, was not 
from the same this thing. So they didn't believe in circumcision. So Moses didn't obey God to circumcise his sons. Maybe it was the wife that said, no way, no, no, I beg, I beg, all those kind of bloody things. When God came, did he ask the wife? Did he ask the wife? Who did he want to kill? Let me tell you something. Whether you like it or not, as a man, if you trivialize your work with God, as a Christian man, you jeopardize your marriage. Because God is expecting you to be the keeper at the gate. It is not your wife that says, Ah, oh, honey, wake up now. Let's pray now. Uh, honey, let's come and go to church now. And you are dragging behind. You are the head. And all you single people, let me tell you something. When you want to pray, pray that God will give you a good head over your head. Because whoever you marry can sink the boat of your destiny. If you marry a wrong person who does not have a correct head, he can sink the boat of your destiny. So this girl has come to this meeting tonight. She has gotten revelation. The man self has gotten revelation. Now they are ready to work together. And the assignment is help him carry the chair to the pastor's place. And they are cooperating now. They are cooperating. Is the work getting done? Is the work getting done? And they will get it done very fast. Tomorrow I will tell you how did you, did you help them to finish the assignment? You help them to finish the assignment? Praise God. Can we celebrate them? Glory to God. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your purpose for marriage. We thank you for your purpose for marriage. We thank you because you are such a good God. Every direction you have us covered, you have thought about all the details. You have thought about all the details. Please open your eyes for one minute. Listen, if you are here tonight, eh, and you don't know your purpose, you don't know God's vision for your life, by eight o'clock, eight, you go to Telegram. If you don't have Telegram and you have um, data, just download Telegram as I'm talking. Then, by eight, look for change your life in 30 days and join. I'll be talking to you then. I don't have time now. I'll tell you how you must engage to get that vision that you will pursue. Hmm. If not, you will find out that Year after year, life is going. And no sense of purpose. You know why a girl can just get up and just say, ah, somebody don't come, make I just marry. No sense of purpose. No sense of purpose. There were guys who wanted to marry me that time in Word of Life. I look at some of them. Straight away, I know say, this man is not born again. Just the con church. I'm going to trade with my destiny. I mean, tall, handsome, good looking. They had cars. They had cars. It's not about car. How much is car? How much is car? How much is car compared to my destiny? Of all the people that came to propose to me, my husband was the least educated. I didn't say married, least educated, though. I'm just showing you something. Are you listening to me? He was the least educated. He was the least. No, he finds person. And boy, it was the slimmest when it comes to size. Okay? It was the least pepperized. But excuse me. Are we hungry? Are we suffering? May God give you wisdom. May God give you wisdom. So when I see a young guy, I say, ah, if you not get moto, nothing. If you not get, how much be moto? Do you know that you can marry a man with moto today? Next week, the moto don't get accident. Una go trek forever. Marry with sense. Marry with sense. 
And any woman, any uh, single person here, any single man here, you are trusting God for marriage. I'm telling you, by the wisdom of God coming to you here, God is going to bring direction. You, do you know that God is the one in charge of human traffic on earth? He knows where everybody is. God is going to be aligning your steps. I'm telling you, after this uh, summit, you will just be moving and you wanted to go to the east and God said, no, go to the west. Because somewhere there, that person that you should marry is going to be there. Come on, shout amen. amen. Tomorrow we're going to be taking special time to pray for single people trusting God for relationships and, I mean, purposeful relationship and marriage. It's going to be part of what we're doing tomorrow. Lift your hands, Father. Thank you. Thank you for my brothers. Thank you for every one of my brothers here. Oh God, help them to stand up to be the men they should be. Oh, help them, Father, to be the men they should be. Everyone, God, here playing with their spiritual experience, their spiritual walk, I pray, God, that something will happen in their hearts. Let there be a quickening by the Holy Ghost in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm asking you, God, Every single married couple here, whether they're both people are here or just one person is represented, I'm asking you, God, to do something in those marriages. Let the purposes for which you created marriage be fulfilled in their lives. Let every marriage here be exceptional. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Clap your hands. Give God praise tonight. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so there's an online question. And please, let's celebrate all the people following us online. I mean, people following online are more than people that are here. You know, it's a global marriage summit. Glory! <laughs> and you see, when somebody saw global marriage summit, maybe he thought when you come here, people will be outside. See, that world, the world has gone more than that. People were watching from all over, from the UK, from everywhere. People will be watching and just being blessed. Amen. Okay, online question. Can a man marry for purely, purely for companionship? Let me ask you, can he? You can take, if you go and do an exam, and the exam is five questions, and you pass only one, so you got one over five, you pass? Companionship is just one out of five. If you just go for only that one, what is companionship if we will not end up in the bedroom? That's the, the, where the companionship is. Eh? Yeah, what's the companionship? No, there are couples who say we don't, have to, we don't want to have children. Okay? But let me tell you, if you are that kind of person who say you don't want children, please discuss it with the person first. Don't go and jeopardize somebody's uh, gary. Okay? But if, if, if you want to even look for one thing, to marry for, if you want to exclude every other thing, let it be purpose. I, do you agree with me? Let it be purpose. Let it be purpose. But then that's still one out of five. Glory to God. The Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. Let's get out our offerings tonight. Let's take out our offerings quickly. If you are paying your tithe as well, just get your tithe. All of you men, let me tell you something. One of the things you must learn if you are born again, as the head of the home, learn now that you are single to be a tighter. Learn to be a tighter. Learn it. It will help your entire family. Learn it. Let me take one. Can I take two minutes of your time to tell you something? Can I take two minutes? Yeah. If, even if you say no, I will still take them. So you might as well just happily say yes, ma. Now let me tell you something. Do you know that a person who learns to tie? I've been working for the past 33, okay, 34 years. My, this is my job, but I hustled small one year before I got this job. So 34 years I have worked. I can't remember one month I didn't pay my tithe. I paid my tithe when I was doing this uh, casual, what was this, uh, private school. I was earning 300 naira. In those days, in 1987, 1988. I was earning 300. My salary finished before the middle of the month. I paid my tithe. So tithe has nothing to do with whether the money is big or the money is small. If you are faithful in small, then you will be faithful in the big. Amen. Please, I want to beg you, especially the brothers. 
pay your tithes. Don't let it look like anything big. Set it now that you are young as a must do. Set it now that you are young as a must do. Pay your tithes. So let's stand up with our offerings, everybody. Hey. And this will call long. <laughs> I, love to, I love talking to people and anytime I talk to people and make them feel better, there's this satisfaction I get and I've had or still have friends that anytime they have serious issues, they like contacting me. And there's this rumor that comes, that comes to talk to them. But I've been trying to stop because I think there's no gain in it. And also, after the issue, I won't hear from them again until they need another advice on some. And it's bothering me. What should I do? Keep doing it. Let me tell you something, eh? I told some people some time, many years ago, I, I, I pre preached it on radio. Do you know that when you graduate and you don't have a job, eh? go to a company that you like. Go and offer your service for free. Don't pay me, I just want to. You see, one thing you will do is that you get experience. You put it in your CV. And the way the universe is configured, eh? there is what is called the law of compensation. So, you have advised somebody, you didn't hear from them. What did you want to hear from them? How many people have I prayed for? And God helped them. They got big jobs. They didn't even remember to pay tight, not even to put envelope, something in envelope for pastor. It doesn't bug me. It doesn't bug me. Because by the law of compensation, my payment will find a way to come to me. So whatever gifts you have been doing, don't think of it, first of all, in relation to money. Just do it. Amen. We'll close now. Any online question we take tomorrow. Let's stand up. Let's bless our offerings tonight. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for our offerings. We are giving cheerfully. We are giving rejoicing. We are really happy for what you are doing at this marriage summit. We ask God that your hand of blessing will rest upon our finances. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Now, before you come out, let me quickly say this. Tomorrow is the last teaching for this summit. You see, we have not even scratched the surface. This one we, uh, even we go a whole month, we won't finish. We have not scratched the surface. But on Saturday morning, all single people in single mingle, 10 o'clock. In the evening, couples. And please, I want you to do, do me a favor, everybody here. Do me a favor. If you are a married person, number one, you must be here with your wife or your husband. But then help me locate young couples and just bring them in the evening on Saturday. Let them just dress up and come. There's enough food. There's enough, enough everything. It's not teaching that Saturday. It's just relaxation and then just gisting as couples. Amen. Please come out. Give your offerings.